know, I guess, thorough way. way. Uh -huh. and, and possibly arbitrarily, no. but, but no. in a good way. I think that the board has made, or the finance committee has made, a good faith effort to, you know, get a range of, of money. But I think some of this, I, I, I would agree that if I were to just look at this kind of um, neutrally, it does, some of them seem a bit high, you know, interior and exterior signage. That would be a, a nice thing. It's not like we have, you know, in, inferior or obsolete signage at this moment. You know, um, the library interior space and I, this is a nice thing to do, but it's not exposing us right now. It's been contained. I think the asbestos has been contained. And I think we would need to kind of build some type of, you know, demonstrated um, need for some of these improvements. And also maybe, you know, some, some, of it's some public, public surveying, if this is something that is a need. Well, the signs, for example, we've gotten a lot of feedback over the last several years about there being confusion over some signs. And so there's been actually a concerted effort over these last couple of years to, to redo what we've done signage wise to make it more patron friendly. Sure. So, so to your point, it's, it's being, it's, it's, again, like, like someone said, this is, this is ongoing. And so these things are all listed here because of when the need becomes imminent. But in the meantime, before that need becomes imminent, we have a list of things that we know need to be addressed at some point on the horizon. And that's what this document is for. On the for. horizon of one year, or on the no, horizon this is long, of it's long term. This it's, is yeah. long term. Yeah. So that's that's and that's what that's that's what makes operating the library. This this is like keeps it in a safe place. You know, in terms of being able to anticipate things both near term, mid term, and long term, and having this document that kind of gives us again not in great detail as Anthony said, but we, we know we know from experience um, that this is approximation or close enough. To give us at least a good a good jumping off point for a potential expenditure. I mean, what we would be doing at the point that we start developing the detail for any one of these projects is working with the architects and engineers who are going to specify what the current requirements are, what's available, what options we should consider. You know, just as we have in the past year with the outdoor renovation, and there were some decisions that couldn't be made until we had those details. The snowmelt system is a good example mm -hmm. of that. The snowmelt system turned out to be a lot less expensive than when I put mine in in my driveway 10 years ago. The point is, those are opportunities that you estimate, but you don't get a firm price on them until you're ready to proceed with the design work that tells you exactly what the specs are going to be and what you're going to do in the project. These are all estimates based on looking ahead to things that are needed based on requests from patrons, based on just keeping the building sound and, and well managed. That doesn't mean that we're going to take any of the numbers that are here as, you know, they're guidelines and as we've seen with the outdoor renovation, the plan was actually not very far off what our actual costs are going to be. That's, that's a pretty good alignment. We might find in the, other, in the others that we have, as we gather more detail about any one of these, uh, that again, the, the estimate was, was pretty close to what we, what we actually would do. But the question is, when do you start the design work? When do you contract with the architects and the engineers to complete those? Generally, it's when you've made a commitment to proceed, rather than when you're trying to decide what numbers should be in this kind of a long-range planning document. So, you know, it's a, there, there are options that can be explored, and it's certainly an item that, that the Finance Committee and the Director can continue to look at. I don't think that it should delay we can change this any time we get new information. I don't think it, that it should delay, and the Finance Committee recommends that we not delay adopting this with the changes that are in it, principally in item I, and, and then making adjustments later if, if we have the information that justifies it. Let me ask a, just a procedural question. Why are we, this isn't part of the annual Budget and appropriation ordinance. So why are we doing this now without what's the timeline? 
it's been our practice Annually. to do this at the same time that we're dealing with the other budget issues. It's not a requirement that it be done at any particular time, but we have tended to do it during this part of our budget and appropriation and levy cycle. Okay. And again, Dan, I, the thing I think, just on the appropriations that you seem to be missing last year, we're not we're not obligating ourselves to anything here. All we're doing is putting in an approximation so we have an understanding that do we have enough money in reserve to handle these things if they happen to all come up at the same time. And so so we're not, this is nothing we're obligating ourselves for, but again, it's just giving us something that is a, as a, as a hopefully a very um, a close approximation, as, as Ron just said, so that when we do have, when something does become imminent, we then dive into it further and, and have the ability to move move in a very um, prudent way for the library. To do and so. it's a resolution. I yeah. mean, in his second uh, paragraph of the overview, it, you know, the library prepares a resolution amending a plan and estimating costs. It outlines long-range plans. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm, I'm not missing it. It's a legal mm -hmm. obligation to justify stockpiling, you know, six million dollars. And it was clear to me from the attorney we need to have some more justification than some common sense guesses, which may or may not end up I being there. So my, my, my last guess. comment. Look, I mean, we, we, there, there's no right document. The, the, the study does not, the study clearly does not support these numbers. The lawyer, the lawyer already told us in the meeting that what we have here is, is more than sufficient. So we don't need something further. And again, why spend money, why waste money now on something that we're going to have to spend money on later? Well, that begs the question. Do we need to spend all this money? And it's not we just a We are not resolution. spending it yet. Yeah, no, it's no. a resolution. Yeah. Exactly. This is what about. our long range plan is. It, it has legal significance to justify moving it out of our general operating fund no. into, it, 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 this is required. That was done yeah. a long time no, ago. No, no, this, yeah. this is money that's already in the, the, the special reserve yeah. fund. Which only can be permitted to be in a special reserve fund if there's a plan documenting what we intend to spend it on. And this is more like, you know, a, a vague I guess, wish list. I guess we heard differently what the lawyer yeah. said, because what I heard, basically, this was sufficient. And, and the lawyer has offered that opinion each year. The, this has not been done absent the lawyer's participation and advice in past years. This this plan is not something he had not seen before tonight. The bottom line is uh, this is a long-term process, and we have met the requirements with this resolution for the past several years. We modify it from time to time based on changes that come to our attention or that we think need to be made in it. These are not wild guesses. These are the best guesses and educated estimates based on the professionals who would participate in each of these projects without incurring the cost of having them create detailed plans. And who, who are those professionals that came up with these figures? The engineers and architects that we've worked with on our past projects. So I can, I can add two parallel other pieces. projects. I can add two other pieces to this. So while I've been working on this outdoor renovation project, I meet daily with our construction manager. And we frequently get off track, and he wants to know what I'm working on, and I just will volunteer that I was working on this resolution. Um, he has an interest. He's a construction manager. He deals with this kind of thing. He deals with this kind of thing every day. I said, well, so here are some of the plans that we're looking at long range in our building. We're doing this outside right now. You're familiar with that. You've been inside. You've seen some of the things that we've got in our space. I've leaned on him about, you know, the, the asbestos in the basement, for example, and whatnot. And I said, this is kind of what we're talking about. Does, do these numbers make sense to you? And he anecdotally, and I'm not putting him on the spot here about this, but he anecdotally said, this makes sense to me, construction manager. One other thing that we could do. Um, I, I've, I've expressed, you know, my opinion about the utility of the FQC report. If it pleases the board, um, I would be more than happy to, at, this would be something you would have to budget for, but to go forward with a comprehensive engineering capital reserve study that would produce a workbook type document like what I was referring to that would assess um, all of our systems and review them for 
improvement, replacement, updating, and include assessments in terms of priority. What is a life safety type improvement that should be done first? What are some things that would be related to the building integrity um, where there might be moisture penetration or something and that we call for tuck pointing or something like that? Um, where there may be something to talk about functional obsolescence where um, this piece of equipment no longer works or is outmoded, there's a better solution for this that's more efficient, LED lighting, that kind of thing. Or aesthetic obsolescence where something is maybe less pleasing, like a kitchen renovation where you can, you know, go through and, and look at something to make it look more updated. Um, and then would set forth an entire inventory of all the capital assets in the building, kind of like what the, you see in this FQC report, but would also put it inside of a table and would take it out over a period of years and kind of tell you what those costs would be. And you could hire an engineer to do all of this. And a consultant like that, the fees could, could range up to $20,000 to create a plan uh, that would look like that. That could be a tool that you could then refer to and say that's what's driving uh, a resource like this. Um, in my estimate, I think you would get very similar results, but you would have a concrete document that would point to those examples. And then we could prioritize and spend it wisely and have a plan for it by professionals that do this for a living. I'd certainly be more comfortable with that. Than yeah, but this resolution doesn't obligate us to spend any anything. of this money today. Uh, well, no, no that's but, understood. Yeah. I think it's you know, at least, you know, just prioritizing this, wants versus needs, um, I think a study that Mr. Austin brings up, even for one of them, even for, you know, I or B, for example, if we feel like that's a priority in this, in this roadmap. I, I just think it's a waste maybe of money. Not, it's a well, waste maybe of money. not for all of these categories, it's, yeah, but, it's, but it certainly would demonstrate to the board and to the public, for that matter, why we chose um, to fund the Special Reserve Fund the way we are, and why we, and what we're, I guess, prioritizing then in the future as a board. Well, the, well, the items are already on here. What we're think, what we're thinking about. So, in terms of priorities, they're already, I think, kind of listed. I don't know that they're alphabetical in terms of they're priorities. Not, I think the study would, though. The study. But, but would. the study. But again, I think. Okay, but well, you're missing we, one element. You're well, not getting any of the community input, looking long range as to what they might want before you do the prioritization. Sometimes it's necessity. Sometimes it's programs or trends and changes that come up. There's a motion on the floor. Mm -hmm. I move that we do the vote. Okay. If it fails, then we come back. Okay. Because I think the discussion we've heard and it's enough. getting repetitive at this point in time. Well, that's the this is the this is the moment for it. And maybe if it is getting repetitive, you know, we apologize. But this is the moment for discussion. I know, but right. if you keep saying the same thing over and over, it's it's just a long. Well, when when shall we discuss it? If We're we, discussing if we it. Don't, we get it. If we don't um, pass it today, will there be a special like? meeting that we could attend, I guess, or there was to understand Well, the more, response, or, the first the part of the response would read. be to allow Anthony time to act on the suggestions that have been offered for gathering additional information. He needs to bring a proposal to the board with respect to any engineering study that would support further information, and then that would go to the appropriate committee um, it might go to finance or it might go to buildings. building. It's a question that needs to be evaluated in more detail, but we don't have the information in hand to do it now. So the issue really would be to work on this, giving Anthony the time to act on his suggestions so that the next time we look at this, and that doesn't have to be at this time next year, it could be when we have the, the, uh, the engineering report that would say, here's, here's a list of the priorities that they recommend. Then we could make an amendment, further amendment, to this list. But right now, this is the best information we have. And it's not, you know, it's, it's not information that is likely to be found to be radically wrong. It is based on careful analysis and consideration by architects, engineers, contractors, and our, you know, the, the director who had the major role in this, Ellen Clark, who was on this library staff for over 27 years. 
and was director for 12 of those years. So that's a pretty good source Experience base for, for, sure. yeah. for knowing how to deal with this. I agree. There's nothing arbitrary about anything in this list. This is a best estimate based on all of her experience and work with the professionals that are involved in each of these items. That's, you know, that's the best information we have. We can work toward getting additional information. That's not a problem, but we're not going to solve that tonight. No. And I just want to add one more thing, which, which without trying to be redundant, but Fina, and I appreciate, and again, I, I think having a conversation is a very good thing, a discussion is a very good thing, but also to keep in the context, as a board, we're trying to do things to improve the efficiency and the functioning of the library. And that includes the efficiency and functioning of Anthony as the director. So if we start as a board throwing all thing, kinds of things for him to do that then that are in addition to the other things he's already prioritized, it, again, if there are things we deem necessary, then by all means. But if it's something, as, as Ron just said, this document already serves the purpose that we need, it, serve, it, serves, it, serves what, it serves the legal need, it serves the needs of the library, it serves the, ner it serves the needs of the community. It's, it's here again, not as 